Well, it's Holy Week, and Holy Week is often spring break for a lot of schools. Our guest this evening has a new book of saints to accompany teachers and those who work with kids in school. Amy Catapan is a middle school English teacher plus Catholic speaker, retreat leader, and author. She hosts the podcast Cath Lit Live, where she interviews Catholic authors with new releases. She's also written several books, including Sweet Jesus... Is it June yet? Also sounds like from a teacher's perspective. <laughs> and the award-winning novels, Angelhood and Seven Riddles to Nowhere. Her latest book, though, is called A Saint Squad for Teachers, 45 Heavenly Friends to Carry You Through the School Year. Welcome to the Busted Halo Show, Amy Catapan. Hello, Father Dave. It is so good to see you and be talking with you again. It's been a little while. It's been a little while. I think most recently, at least Brett and I, perhaps not Krista, our producer, but Brett and I saw you on pilgrimage with us. Yes, on pilgrimage 10 years ago. And actually, we did see each wow, other once after ago. that. If you remember, you came to the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe here outside of Chicago. And I got to I see do. the two of you briefly then, too. Wow. So it's been a few years, though. But my strongest yeah. memory from that, Brett, is Joey Ramon Engelbrecht, our yep. sound engineer, outside with like three mittens on and a remote microphone interviewing people because it was so cold. <laughs> it was like yeah, eight <laughs> degrees out, and we had him do like word on the street, and he yeah. was like, going out there. Back to you! <laughs> you know, like cartoon icicle or like the bobbing ice. You and I are in the warm <laughs> studio. Well, why don't I you have somebody so else bad, out there? It was what so it's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was one of those people outside, and I yeah. found Joey, and he was so excited to have somebody say his name that he ran over to me. Well, also, anyone who's, I think you were nice enough to stick around and talk to him for a minute. Everyone else yeah. was like, thank you, Mary. You know, our lady was like, run back to the car or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, Amy, I can't believe it's been 10 years since the pilgrimage, but uh, great to have you with us again. I know, you're, time flies. <laughs> you're a, a middle school? You teach middle school? That is correct. Yeah, and over 25 it, years now. Is it right now spring break for you? It is my spring break Ooh, week, break. yeah, or or my media blitz week, as I've been calling it. <laughs> it's <laughs> also the opposite of a break. Got it. Yes. Spring Brett, blitz. I believe uh, you're on your Easter break as well, Brett. Is that? Yeah, I mean, both of us are sitting here working, so it's hard for us to both say we're on spring break. It <laughs> feel like it, really. But no, from to, our, my school that I work at and my day job is is off this week. In fact, yes. No, they don't call it spring break. I work with sixth graders through high school, so they don't. They call it Easter week still. Easter They're not week. really at the spring break. Uh, I mean, you're right, but they don't call it that. <laughs> don't want the sixth graders funny. getting ahead of themselves. <laughs> and where are you? What cut part of the country? I forget. I'm in Chicago. Yeah, I teach in the north uh, suburbs of Chicago. Uh, and we do call it spring break at the middle school. Okay. Oh, so. All right. Even good at the middle. They, they got to get ready. They got to get ready. Yes. They get into good yeah, college. Yeah. <laughs> so, Amy, you've, you've written before about kind of the, the faith perspective on school and whatnot. But this is a little bit new take, a book on saints for teachers. Yeah, so this was a bit of a surprise because, as you mentioned oh, before, yeah. I really started as a as a novelist. I was writing books for kids because I'm an English teacher at the middle yeah. school level, and so that's a genre I'm very familiar with. Sure. And then, lo and behold, I was in the middle of my doctoral program while teaching full time, and believe it or not, I got a little bit burned out from the whole thing. <laughs> and uh, we, we got to this point of the year, it was right before spring break. And I thought, okay, Lord, if you want me to finish this doctoral program while I'm teaching, you're going to have to send me some help. And the first thing that he did was he sent me actually away. He sent me on a spring break retreat. He said, you know, why don't you go five days silent retreat? You know, I'm, I'm Jesuit educated. So I'm very familiar with Ignatian spirituality and, and doing the silent retreat thing. And the thought that fluttered into my head during prayer was to write a book about teaching like Jesus. And so that's where the Sweet Jesus Is It June Yet book came from. Because it's all about, <laughs> yeah, I know. All the teachers laugh at that one. Other people go, what was the what? title again? What's but June? What, get it right what does away. that have to do? What's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, very understandable. Brett understands now. <laughs> so does my wife, who's also yes. a teacher. Yeah, 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 she gets it. She gets it. <laughs> And so that, you know, that came out a few years ago and I thought, well, that's, you know, that was great. That helped kind of get me through the, the early part of the pandemic, mm. but it's still been very challenging as a teacher, even post pandemic, we're still dealing with the fallout and just the polarization of our society and how mm. our culture has changed. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I kept thinking, what, what else can I do? And the scene that kind of was running through my head, because see, I have four brothers, I don't have any sisters. So it was a scene from the old Star Trek. You remember the old 1960s Star sure. Trek, right? Oh, yeah. Grew yeah. Up. So yeah. the scene that kept running through my head was Captain Kirk 
asking the engineer, Scotty, you know, to make the ship go faster or something. And Scotty is yelling back in his wonderful Scottish accent that he's got to have more power, Captain, right? Which I can't <laughs> sound like. It's got Scotty, good, but... Captain. <laughs> I can't change the laws of physics, Captain. I need more power. Power. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. I knew somebody on the show could do it for me. Of course you got it. <laughs> But that is when all these books on saints started coming into my life. You know, I asked for more and the Lord granted. Oh. He said, oh, interesting. here are some saints. And I got all this beautiful collection of books on saints. And I was really surprised to find out how many of them were teachers, either for their whole career or for part of their career. I had no idea how many patron saints there were of Catholic schools, of school children, of education of the poor. There's so many different patron sites out there for teachers, for catechists, um, for university professors, and they each have something to share with us that I think can really benefit. I know it's been helping me out the last few years <laughs> yeah, as I've been nice. learning about them and sharing about them. Amy Catapan is our guest here on the Busted Halo Show. We're talking about her new book, A Saint Squad for Teachers, 45 Heavenly Friends to Carry You Through the School Year. Brett was guesstimating that that's about the number of weeks you have in the school year? That's, yeah, that's probably, it's actually a yeah. little bit more. Usually it's about 36 weeks. If you do nine oh. week quarters, it's okay. about 36 weeks. So you get a few saints to spare, nice. right? You oh, do spare one saints. week and a few <laughs> to spare. You're gonna need extra, you know? If yeah, you're, yeah, you're really going you might. Every some, day. Weeks, yeah. some weeks are two weeks, two saint weeks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and obviously the book is not only great for people who work in a school, because a lot of these, like you said, they're patron saints of people who are in school. So if you've, if you've got kids, if you've mm -hmm. ever been in school yourself. <laughs> so yes. these are great saints to know about. And obviously it's written through your style. So even if somebody has got like Butler's Lives of the Saints on the shelf, this might be a little more, shall we say, accessible. Yes, I've been told my writing style is uh, very easy to follow. Uh, I teach middle school, so you know you have to you have to word things in a way that's going to engage your readers and keep their attention. And so I've been told it's a very easy read. The biographies of the saints are short, so you could spend just like five minutes every morning read through a saint and the reflection that I give on that saint's life and what we can take from it. And like you said, there are saints in there that were students. There are saints in there that were catechists and parents. So. Anyone who does any kind of like educating, evangelizing, working with mm -hmm. young people, I think can find something in there to appeal to them. Well, let's dig in. Let's uh, let's talk about a saint. What's one of your favorites of these 45? Okay, one of my favorites has to be Mother Cabrini, and it's oh, not sure. just because not just because the movie is out. There's so a big she, movie right now about her. It yeah, is, <laughs> it is, and I would encourage people to see the movie, but then go learn more about her because there's so much more. And, and God bless, God bless the folks that put that movie out. That yeah. movie released the same day as Dune. I mean, that's that's gutsy. Good, yes. good for them, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, going up against some stiff competition. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I'm I'm hearing from people who are seeing it and are wanting to go and learn more about her. My own brother was like, "Hey, I know you have some books on her. Can I borrow <laughs> some of the books you used when you researched her for your book?" Yeah. Um, because I want to learn more about her, but. She is a powerhouse. A lot of people don't know she started actually as a public school teacher. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be a nun, but she had poor health from the time that she was very young. She was born two months premature, and she was actually rejected from a couple of convents because of her health issues. So she decided to become a teacher instead and got her Italian public school teacher license and started teaching. And she was so good with the kids. She had a very gentle yet firm style. That yeah, other people, yeah, yeah. Yeah, other people started taking notice of her, um, including her own pastor, who said, "Hey, you know, you've got some great organizational skills here. We've got an orphanage nearby. It's in desperate need of some new leadership. Can you come over and fix the orphanage?" And so she kind of started coming in as the fixer-upper. You know, when yeah. there were schools or orphanages that needed a good leader, she would come in. And the trade so today, today we would call that being like a consultant. Let's bring yeah. in the Cabrini consultant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the thing that I really admire about her, I mean, the fact that, other than the fact that we're both like petite little Italian women, right? She was five <laughs> feet, I'm five foot two. I'm Italian on my dad's side. Like we have a lot of things in common. Okay. Um, but she also really um, trusted in God. And that's something I, I kind of wish they'd put in the movie. I love the movie, but she had this great faith that when she found a building that she wanted for school, 
or an orphanage, it, she would say, all right, this is the building. And her sisters would say to her, but mother, we don't have the money for that building. Mm -hmm. She said, that's all right. The Lord's going to provide. She would just pick out the place first and trust that the money would come. Like she had an idea for a, a building that she wanted. She had this dream. And one day she was walking home with her sisters and this wealthy woman drove by, offered them a ride back to um, the convent. The next day, Mother Cabrini sees this house. It's what she'd seen in her dream. dream. She knocks on the door. By any chance, is this for sale? Turns out it was the husband of the woman who had given her a ride the day before. Like there hmm. are all these really cool stories of her praying for help from the Lord. And then it just sort of showing up. Right. She's a great, I think, role model for us for trusting that God's going to be there for us. Amy Catapan is our guest here on the Busted Hill Show. And we're talking about her new book, A Saint Squad for Teachers, 45 Heavenly Friends to Carry You Through the School Year. You're very in touch with the young people. It's squad. That's what they say now. That's like they're friends, right? The squad. Yeah. You got to have squad goals, Father. Who's squad on your goals? Squad? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it used, used to be like a posse. And then let's see. Yeah. What was it back in my day? Like, group, I guess. I don't know. So we had a cool, friends. cool word for it. <laughs> <laughs> friends, yeah. Circle of friends. Yeah. <laughs> Squad of saints. I like how you've, uh, and it's obviously not just a list, like here's 45 saints. You you even give us, even as you're kind of thumbing through the book, like a reason to kind of delve into this saint. Like you talk about each saint and what they're, how they sort of connect with modern society, like loving the unruly child of St. John Bosco, calming stressed out students, St. Students, Dorotheus of Gaza. Uh, that's interesting these days. Uh, yes. But I was surprised by how you, you, you named St. Thomas Aquinas. Obviously, many people familiar with him and probably a lot of people know he is a patron saint of students. There are several, but he's certainly mm -hmm. one of the more renowned. But you called him notice or you said describing him noticing the quiet students. Why is that? Well, uh, he's the one I have a kinship with, too. But Mother oh. Cabrini, St. Thomas Aquinas and I, we were all a little bit on the shy side when we oh. were younger. Oh, Aquinas and, Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mother Cabrini was as known as being kind of shy, but a great leader. And Thomas Aquinas was known as being a very quiet student, so much so that he was given the nickname the dumb ox. They thought oh, he was right. quiet because right. he wasn't very bright. Okay. Until um, they discovered that once he started preaching, he was actually very bright and very good <laughs> at preaching. And suddenly it was like, where did he come from? And I had a similar experience when I was in college. Um, I was taking a literary criticism class <laughs> and I felt very awkward in the class. Like, I read literature for fun. Why should I criticize it? Right. Like, oh. <laughs> the idea of critiquing literature seemed you know, kind of challenging and foreign to me. So I was very quiet most of the semester. And then in the second half, we all had to get up and lead a little mini lesson. Well, on stage in high school, despite my shy nature, I did a lot right. of theater. I was planning on becoming a teacher. As long as I had my little mini lesson prepared, I had no problem getting up and talking. The feedback I got from all my classmates was where has this girl been all semester? She was so quiet, I didn't even know she was in the room. Why doesn't she speak up more? And so when I read about Thomas Aquinas, you know, being so quiet in his class and then suddenly surprising everybody when he finally got up to preach, I'm like, now this is another saint I can relate to. I get it. <laughs> Amy Catapan is our guest here on the Busted Hill Show. We're talking about her book, A Saint Squad for Teachers, 45 Heavenly Friends to Carry You Through the School Year. I really liked in your in your epilogue um, about St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross that many people might know as Edith Stein, because uh, she's there's a lot of St. Teresa's and she loved uh, the St. Teresa's. But um, you, you, you frame that under finding a second career. Yeah, so I didn't know when I started doing my research that she had been a teacher for a while. And it wasn't something she was really expecting to do, especially at the lower levels. You know, she was very interested in higher education and she wanted to basically be like a professor and do a lot of research and writing. Um, but at the time, those kind of positions were not open to women. So she ended up teaching at the younger grades, but it was something that she always felt a bit uncomfortable about. She even said she didn't think of herself too seriously as a teacher. And whenever she had to write it down as like her profession, she kind of laughed a little bit. And so eventually she ended, <laughs> yeah, That's she funny. quit teaching eventually, right? Um, and a priest friend of hers said, okay, maybe you're not teaching anymore, 
but there's still a way you can teach through your writing. And that's when she really focused on her writing and her speaking. And I just thought, you know, that's interesting for me because I'm sort of in that phase of my life where I've been a classroom educator for a long time. I'm speaking, I'm writing, mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking to what's next. A lot of teachers have kind of a second career after they leave the classroom. So I wanted to make sure I kind of gave some ideas of saints who did similar things, who right. taught maybe for decades in the classroom, but then reached a point where they felt God calling them to something else. If this sounds interesting to you, if you've uh, your interest has been piqued by a couple of saints that we've talked about, there's many more in the book, A Saint Squad for Teachers, 45 Heavenly Friends to Carry You Through the School Year. Author Amy Catapan is also the host of the podcast, Cath Lit Live. How can if people are, find that interesting? They can listen to you interviewing other authors, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they can come check me out on YouTube. That's where they end up. And they also oh. are shared on CatholicMom.com or they can Ooh. follow me on Facebook and Instagram oh. and find them there as well. And we'll put several of those links on our radio blog, bustedhalo.com slash radio, and particularly where you can pick up the new book, A Saint Squad for Teachers, 45 Heavenly Friends to Carry You Through the School Year. Brett, do you feel like you could be carried through the school year now? Uh, June is We not need so all hard. the help we can get. <laughs> Amen. So, Amen. Well, I'll put one in my back pocket and see. What, we'll take it from there. <laughs> I know I'm not Amy, alone. <laughs> Amy, great to see you. Thanks. Yeah, great, great to, see, to you. see you guys. Thank you for having me on.